afternoon and welcome. This is your host, Joan Kessler, welcoming you to the Mercy Health Healthcare Spotlight. Every Saturday, Mercy Health brings you important and helpful information that we hope will help you and your family with your health care decisions. Mercy Health offers the best of both worlds, local quality health care and access to specialists, technologists, and cutting-edge treatments throughout West Michigan. Whether you receive care at one of our hospitals or at one of our outpatient locations, we are committed to helping you receive the very best health care possible. At Mercy Health, it's not either or, it's all of these and more. It's Mercy Health. Today, we are pleased to welcome three people who are intensely passionate about caring for our elders. They are experts in the field, and it is my pleasure to welcome geriatrician Dr. Aruna Josila and social worker Kayla Moore of Mercy Health Physician Partners Geriatrics, as well as Kim Bailey Vazquez, Senior Resources Access Services Supervisor. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Today, Dr. Josela, Kayla, and Kim will help introduce us to a new program for seniors in Muskegon called Let's Stay Home. This is a collaborative, collaborative effort between Mercy Health Muskegon and Senior Resources. Good afternoon, Dr. Josela. Before we jump into our program and what it's all about, let's have you to tell us who you are and what you do. Thanks, Joan. Um, it's a pleasure to be here, and thank you for having us on. Um, I am one of... Uh, the geriatricians at Mercy Health Physician Partners, geriatrics, um, and I take care of primarily and only uh, older patients, uh, all of whom are 65 and older, and the majority are actually 75 and older. So that's what I do on a daily basis. I provide them primary care, um, and I also work a lot with educating about um, geriatric uh, needs. Very good. And where is the office located? It's off of Sherman Boulevard uh, and Roberts at 1150 East Sherman Boulevard. Great. Well, and you brought along with you uh, Kayla, who is a social worker in your practice. Kayla, can you tell us a little bit about what you do? Of course. Um, my role is uh, case manager, MSW case manager at the geriatrics office. Uh, the title can be a little bit deceiving. Uh, what I primarily do is individual therapy, group therapy. Um, I work with families, caregivers. Basically, I just may meet our patients wherever they're at in life uh, and help address any uh, stressors they may be having. Depression and anxiety are the top two uh, mental health conditions that we see in the geriatric population. Uh, so I do my best to just walk with them in their journey. And I, I very much view it as an honor and a privilege for my patients to allow me to be a part of uh, a difficult time in their life and a significant time of transition in their lives. Well, they're lucky to have you. Uh, Kim, can you tell us a little bit about your role at uh, Senior Resources? Absolutely. I am the Access Services Supervisor. Um, for those who are familiar with Senior Resources, we are the Area Agency on Aging for Muskegon, Oceana, and Ottawa County. So we provide lots of services that help people to remain in their own homes as long as possible. Um, those services are ranging, and we'll discuss more of that a little bit later, I believe. Um, but our whole mission is to keep people in their homes. And so uh, part of what I do is oversee what's called case coordination services, care management services, targeted care management services, um, as well as options counseling, all aimed at giving people information and access to services in the community. Well, that's fantastic. Now that we've gotten uh, our audience familiar with who you are, I'm excited for them to know a little bit more about what you're here to tell them about today. And it's an exciting new program called Let's Stay Home. Absolutely. And some of you came together with this great idea. So I'd love to have you tell me, maybe we'll start with you, uh, Doctor, what is this new program, Let's Stay Home? So there was a need that was identified in our community um, through the community uh, needs assessment that was done by the Health Project, um, and that is there needs to be more support with patient advocacy and caregivers um, caring for the, their loved ones, um, especially in the elder population. Um, and so this um, program rose out of uh, rose as a way to address those needs in a, in a, uh, as a pilot. Um, it was actually brought to us by Kim Vasquez and Amy Floria, who is the director, I believe. Yes, she's the community services director at yeah. Senior Resources. Yeah. Don't know the title. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so she, um, she and um, 
Kim uh, approached us um, almost a few months ago. I want to say it was under a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, as they were um, applying for a grant through the Health Project to be able to start this program, which is the hope is to target those uh people who, uh, elders who have been either in the hospital or in the ER uh, emergency room and uh, figure out a way to bridge the gap that caused them to be there um, and also to educate and support the caregivers more and to be able to figure out what things can be brought into the home to prevent another visit to the hospital. Um, so that's kind of where the genesis uh, occurred is that there are there are things we realize that when somebody goes into the hospital, it's not just because they uh, their illness suddenly overpowered them and they had to go to the hospital. It's that other things fell through. Um, they were prescribed a new medication by the doctor that they saw in the outpatient setting, but didn't understand how to use it, didn't know who to go to for some reason, or their family uh, didn't step in and set that that medication for them. And so they didn't get control of whatever disease was trying to be treated. And so they ended up in the hospital. So there's some gaps there in care that happened. Um, and so this program rose out of trying to uh, see if somehow we can pilot a project that helps us meet some of those needs. Um, so the goal, this is a short-term program, and I, I think we might be getting into that, the specifics of the program yeah. in a little bit. Um, but the hope is to then plug the person um, that we're servicing into long-term needs, services, if they need that, so they can be prevented from, um, from having to go back to the hospital if it's avoidable. So then you're saying these are services that we're bringing to the seniors so that they can avoid an admission to the hospital or an ER visit, mm -hmm. or they are going to be better managed with their disease? Correct. Right. Okay, great. Yes. So how did this, maybe Kim, can you tell me what, what you were seeing in the community, why this came about? Absolutely. Um, back about three or four years ago, there was a big push through CMS, um, Centers for Medicare and Medicaid, to do what's called care transitions programming, which is working with the medical community, with our home and community-based services, to help avoid rehospitalizations. Um, so we became interested in doing that, and we actually did a small pilot with Mercy, which where we served 27 individuals um, with a care transitions program. And what we saw it, out of that small pilot was uh, it was very successful in working with individuals who lacked caregivers or whose caregiver was burning out. We saw that that was a huge need. So we began plugging in services such as home delivered meals or um, a homemaker or transportation to those doctor's appointments because we know that that's a huge issue in our community is transportation and it's crucial to get people to those doctor's appointments after they've had an ER or a hospitalization. So that's what we began doing throughout that program and saw how, and how successful it was. And we wanted to continue that work, but we needed to find some type of funding in order to do that work ongoing. So that's where we applied for the, um, the grant through the Muskegon Health Project and was awarded that grant to do this work. So when did you begin that pilot project how long ago? The pilot project was initially in uh, 2013 to 2014 that we did that. Okay. Yep. And then, like I said, we, we've actually continued that program on our own without funding um, because, again, we see the need in the community for that. Um, so that's the hospital to home component versus um, the geriatrics program, which is referrals coming from the geriatrics uh, office themselves for this program. Well, I'm a little bit confused about mm -hmm. what's the difference between this program and what might be your usual uh, in-home care services. So let's um, have one of you talk to, to us about the details of what specifically does the Let's Stay Home program provide to seniors. Right. Well, the Let's Stay Home program, what we do is we provide a, a what we call a coach that goes in to the person's home and sees them. We hope to see them initially after, you know, as 24 hours to 72 hours after the initial referral is made to us. So that coach makes contact. She goes out to the home and begins looking at whatever the scenario might be. What are some of their barriers to accessing health care? Um, oftentimes what we see is there's no food in the home. Um, there's no caregiver that's available to them, so they haven't had proper bathing or proper um, hygiene. 
Um, so we start looking at what are all these contributing factors, and then we put together a plan for how we're going to address that. So the coach then sees them continuously every week for a 30-day intervention for this program. Um, that's unusual to any other program that we have, which is usually one visit, and they're not seen again for another six months. So this is a very intensive intervention that we work with this, with these individuals. So during that time, that plan might be that they have home-delivered meals brought into the home. Um, the plan might be for homemaking to come in and do some cleaning, uh, maybe uh, transport them to some doctor's appointments. Um, it could be a personal emergency response system so that if they're having frequent falls, we can uh, have that uh, backup safety in place for them. Um, so it can be a lot of different types of services, and it's really just driven by um, whatever is needed, what we see when we're out. The other thing that I think is um, different from your typical home health agencies, um, which are a huge support for us, especially when um, – People are homebound and can't leave their homes um, to do various therapies or need close monitoring but can't come into the um, um, office to be, you know, frequently monitored. The home health service agencies such as Mercy Visiting Nurses are hugely supportive. Um, one of the issues, though, is that patients have to have a very obvious medical necessity that requires the nursing or the therapy services to be going. And once that need is met, they no longer can be part of that program. And then so they essentially graduate from that home health service. Um, and, and here, there's not that kind of a, um, a barrier or a limitation. Um, not to mention, there is no billing for these services uh, that the Let's Stay Home program uh, provides. It's not billed to insurance. It's not um, paid out of pocket by the patient. It's a uh, fully free to the patient, um, and it's funded through grant funding. So there's no, there's no actual charge generated to the patient or any insurance. Right, and that's very different than all of our other programs, which usually have eligibility criteria that are tied to financial constraints. Um, here, we're able to serve anybody that's referred to us, which is really beneficial because once people see what a difference it makes in their lives to have those in-home supports and services, they're so much more likely to um, purchase them themselves if they are able to do so. Great. And for our audience, we're talking about the Let's Stay Home program for seniors in our community with the experts from Senior Resources and Mercy Health Physician Partners Geriatrics Practice. Uh, this is very interesting. So you're telling me there's no fee. So anybody who qualifies or is referred to you, tell me what happens when someone re is referred to you as a senior who may be at risk of not being able to stay in their home. What what happens? I actually want to have Kayla um, talk about how the referral starts because that's the referral starts out of our office um, and then kind of proceeds to senior resources. Um, so Kayla does a lot of those um, referrals uh, along with our care managers uh, who are nurses in the office. And so I'd like for her to. Yeah. So um, my patients that I see uh, struggle with various uh, environmental needs. Uh, social needs that remain unmet. Uh, mental health conditions exacerbate uh, physical health conditions. Uh, so oftentimes, if, if things are going awry in the patient's environment, uh, their health declines and they end up in the ER or they end up inpatient. Uh, and it's very difficult for, for the patients and their families. And it's kind of a revolving door. It's a cycle. And, and our hope is the Let's Stay Home program can can uh, put an end to some of that. Um, so when I see my patients struggling with those things, you know, their basic needs aren't being met, they're struggling with uh, various health conditions, they don't have support in the home, or their caregivers are, are struggling to provide the level of care that they need, uh, that's a good indicator to me that I need to send a referral to Deb Bringadal. And she's our contact person uh, that we send the referrals to. And she takes it from there. Um, and what I can say is that uh, the patients that I have referred to the life uh, uh, to the Let's Stay Home program uh, has been uh, extremely influential for my patients. Um, 
Deb does excellent work in educating the caregivers and patients on what resources are available. Um, she's very kind and loving, and our patients uh, absolutely adore her. It makes my job as a therapist a lot easier as well. She's able to coordinate very closely with me and reinforce uh, the action plans uh, for therapy with the patients in the home between sessions. Thank you, Kayla. We're going to take a break right now, and we'd like to get back to this discussion in just a moment about the Let's Stay Home program. But first, I want to remind our listeners about Mercy Health's free high school student heart screenings. Mercy Health high school student heart screenings are pain-free and free and open to any high school student from 9th to 12th grade and any students entering 9th grade in the fall. Each student must have a parent or guardian's consent to undergo the screening. The screenings take place at the Hackley campus in Muskegon. Heart screenings are simple. They are a quick method to identifying pre-existing heart conditions that could increase a student's risk of complications during physical activity or athletic competition. Since 2012, Mercy Health has screened a total of 3,518 high school students and diagnosed four with heart conditions while also identifying over 50% of students tested with borderline or high blood pressure. Heart screenings are completed in about 15 minutes and are comprised of a heart history questionnaire, blood pressure check, 12 lead EKG, physician exam, and if necessary, an echocardiogram. Again, there is no cost for the screening. For more information about upcoming dates and to register your high school student, visit mercyhealthheartandvascular.com. That's mercyhealthheartandvascular.com. Sign up for your child's free heart screening for Mercy Health today. And we're back with Dr. Aruna Jusala and Mercy Health Physician Partners Geriatrics, Kayla Moore, social worker in her practice, and Kim Bailey Vazquez, Senior Resources Access Supervisor. We're talking about the Let's Stay Home program for seniors. At this time, we want to talk a little bit more about what our seniors are experiencing because you're already doing the Let's Stay at Home program. Is that right? Yes, we have been. Yeah. And, and how, give me an example of what one of our seniors might experience. In the home. Uh, well, as I had mentioned earlier, and Kayla had alluded to, um, Deb Bring It All is our care coach. And uh, she would, as soon as she receives the referral, she would make contact with them, go out to the home. And she has a lengthy assessment process, um, really looking at what are what's going on. Is there new medications? Uh, are the medications that they're taking, uh, does that uh, coincide with what the doctor's office uh, has prescribed to the person. So she's looking at that. She's looking at home safety. Are there issues in the home that might create um, some safety issues? Uh, so we want to reduce falls. So looking into those types of issues. Um, she's also going to look at the caregiver and see if there's any needs for information, for skills training, um, maybe respite care for the caregiver uh, to be able to take a break from their uh, caregiving duties. So she's going to go through and look at all of that in that assessment process and then work together with the person um, and their, their team of people. Um, usually they have a caregiver or someone else. They're going to work together to formulate a plan um, for what's going to happen next and what kind of services they might need to be able to remain in their own home. I wanted to add to that, too. Um, another benefit of this program is uh, just communication in general. So uh, Kim mentioned communication with the family and the patient, of course, but uh, she contacts our office weekly with updates uh, with our patients. Any concerns she might have, any needs she sees uh, in the home that, that we might not have catched, um, and we get those reports on a weekly basis. She's uh, quick to respond and very easy to get a hold of. So yeah, no complaints on our end. And uh, coming from a PCP office, uh, that's invaluable. Now you said this is completely free to the senior. How does that happen? How has this been funded? So it, it originally is funded um, through the Muskegon Health Project. We received a $20,000 grant from them to start this program. Um, and then on top of it, we recently, um, with the doctor's office, applied for a grant, the geriatrics office did, um, through the Women for Health organization. Um, and we were the recipients of yet another grant to help support this program um, in the amount of $34,000. So we're very excited to 
be able to use that money to provide this program to seniors in our area. The additional grant funding um, allows us to uh, provide either longer care for a single um, person or service more people. Um, Right now, the original intervention um, with the health projects funding was for 30 days. um, And now we have some flexibility on that as well. Uh, Some people's needs aren't quite met at that 30-day mark. um, And so this funding allows us the flexibility to be able to um, prolong that. And then ultimately, the goal is not for the Let's Stay Home program to be able to provide all the needs, uh, but it's to help patients experience what the gaps were, but now how the, how it feels with the gaps filled, hopefully to encourage them and also support them as we find services that will bridge the gap for future as well. Um, Right. So one of our main goals is to find a long-term solution. So that might be many things. If they're able to pay for in-home services, wonderful. If they're not able to afford it, maybe they are a good fit for one of our other programs that can provide the in-home services over a long term. I think uh, one of the things that we find uh, with um, seniors in general is that their income is limited. So they're fearful of a couple of things. One is... um, asking for help um, as they're used to being independent or self-sufficient. And so this is a, uh, a fear that they're going to lose some of that. Um, uh, and then to spend money on something that they don't think they need. Um, and so this is kind of a risk-free way for them to try some support. Um, and, and then that really helps um open them up to, hey, yeah, I think I can do this. I, I think I need this. I think I, I do so much better now that I have this service in place. Um, I don't have to worry about it and I can focus on other things in my life. So I think that helps. I want to emphasize too that this this isn't just a Muskegon County issue. This is a nationwide issue uh, that uh, many hospitals and communities are struggling with. And uh, so we are very blessed to be a part of this and, and get this program Uh, going and moving for our patients and for their families. Let me ask you this question. We're we're trying to keep our seniors home. I know I'm getting there. I want to make sure I stay in my home (laughs) as long as I can. What's my alternative? If I I can't stay in my home, where am I likely to end up? So the ideal goal that we try to achieve for everybody is um, meeting where they want to be keeping safety at the forefront Mm -hmm. of any decision. Um, For some, um, it's possible to achieve that level of safety that is necessary at home with additional uh, support services. Sometimes they qualify for need-based, financially need-based programs. Sometimes they qualify for, they have the financial wherewithal to afford it. Um, So if we can arrange for that, we, we go for that. Um, if and then there's also a program called uh, the the Pace program, a program of all inclusive care for the under, uh, elderly. That's also with their uh, their neighbors of of uh, senior resources at Tanglewood. Um, it's called Life Circles, and that's a program that's been um, in the community now for several years, and that is geared towards those patients that would otherwise be in a in a, a nursing home. Um, situation, but they're able to wrap their arms around them and help them stay at home by providing more services. So that's another option that's out there in the community. Uh, Assisted living facilities are another uh, option. Um, Before that, there are some senior retirement communities uh, that offer... um, they're not quite. They're 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 not a lot of support services in place. But if an elder needs something, they're able to potentially pay for some services a la carte. Um, there are then assisted living facilities where there's a, a more um, structure in in the amount of support that people receive. There's some fees associated with that, and, and it's a move from your home. Um, and I always tell patients there is a life on the other side of living in an assisted living facility. It's not the end. So. 
yes, we want everybody to stay at home, but it's not the end of your life if you have to move out. Um, assisted living facilities help people uh, socialize. People, uh, especially as they age and lose their ability to transport themselves, lose some of the social interactions when they're home. And then they go to an assisted living facility and suddenly there's all these activities that are being arranged and social interactions in a smaller setting. And so there's a lot more. And then ultimately, uh, sometimes skilled nursing facility or a nursing home is is the safest place. And again, um, it's not the end of life either. People still live lives on the other side. And when you look at when you look at caring for patients and, and meeting their needs and what they want uh, in their third act of life, uh, we try to the best of our ability, as, as do their families, uh, to help them achieve their goals in that regard. Uh, but if they do end up in assisted living facility or a uh, nursing home or any other um, facility that's not their home, it is a significant transition for them. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, depression that comes along with that, a lot of anger that comes along with that. Um, and so what I really try and explain to my patients is uh, is figuring out a way to find their new normal, um, uh, what that might look like. It's not going to look 100% like it did previously. Um, so some of that is unfortunately lowering expectations, um, but figuring out what that new normal is, and that's okay. It's different, but that's okay. Well, I think our community is very lucky to have all three of you out there keeping watch on our seniors. How does someone get involved or get a loved one involved in the Let's Day Helper? And what's that referral process look like? Right now, the referrals to the program are coming uh straight from our geriatrics practice. So if you're a patient uh, within the practice, and there's two ways you can be a patient, either you're a primary care patient um, or you've been referred by your primary care physician into the program for consultation, and that's another avenue to get in as well. Um, the hope is that this can be piloted and we can show some imp- some great um, uh, needs being met um, and hopefully able to be rolling that out to the community. But right now, if you can call geriatrics uh, for a consultation, um, and that that would be a way to get into the Let's Stay Home program. And what's that number? 231-672-6740. Thank you very much. Anything you'd like to say before we close to our senior living at home today who's concerned about not being able to stay at home, what would you say? What what advice do you give your patients? I say call on your support. Figure out who your supports are, your friends, your family, your physician, your uh, neighbors, uh, your community organizations. They're all support services. This partnership between Senior Resources and Mercy Health Physician Partners Geriatrics is about breaking down silos and partnering with what's already existing in the community. So we are working for you. And so reach out to us. Don't give up hope. There, there are alternatives out there, and, and uh, you don't know what's out there until you know. So uh, whether it's contacting our office or senior resources uh, for that support, you'll, you'll be able to get answers and the help you need. Absolutely. Uh, contacting senior resources if you have any questions regarding long-term care. That's what we're there for. Uh, always feel free to give us a call. We'll walk you through whatever life's going on at the moment. Give us the story, and we'll do what we can to help. And the number, Kim? Is 231-733-3585. Wonderful. Well, thank you, ladies. It's been our joy to have you here today. And we want to remind our guests that we were here with the Let's Stay Home program from Mercy Health. I want to thank you all for listening. And we want to thank our guest, Dr. Aruna Josala of Mercy Health, Kayla Moore, social worker at Mercy Health Physician Partners Geriatrics, and Kim Bailey Vasquez, Senior Resources Access Services Supervisor. Today's broadcast has been brought to you by Mercy Health Muskegon. Please join us next week when we discuss today's pediatric care with providers from Mercy Health Physician Partners, Bear Creek. It's Mercy Health. It's not either or, it's all of these and more. It's Mercy Health.